This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by iFixit. Introducing the all new ProTech Toolkit to give you the compact and complete toolkit for all things DIY. For $5 off your purchase of $10 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout. On today's show... You'll know how to build your own hydroponic aqua vase. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to be showing you one of the projects that we've been playing with so you can take it home and build it on your own. Brian. Padre. We've been doing Grow How on Mondays. We have been doing Grow How. We've learned a lot. We have. We've learned how not to completely kill our plants, although I'm still pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah. And um, even <laughs> even despite my best efforts, uh, neglect was the biggest killer yes. of my plants. Yes. You know, just forgetfulness. Well, two things basically kill plants, neglect or too much attention. Right. And I've, I've somehow struck a middle ground for the time being. My bonsai's still alive, so Which is what I've, we got, want. Yeah. I've got you to thank for that. Exactly. Well, well you know, it's it was a learning experience for me as well, so... Go figure. So are, do we have green thumbs now, technically? No, but what we do have are thumbs that will build technology for the use in growing. And like any of our projects that I like, this one has blinky lights. And it has a fan right in your face, Ooh. This is, which is awesome. Oh, right. Ooh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I can feel it. Oh, how about that? It's nice and now, cool. What we did was we took some of the, the lessons that we learned from Grow How, and we decided that we wanted to build something that could sit on a desk like the arrow garden that we're so fond of on, right. on the Grow How episodes, but something that we could build, that we could 3D print, use some of the expertise that we've built up over the last couple of months with Arduinos and WS2812 LEDs, mm -hmm. as well as a, a little new trickery to create an aqua vase. Yeah, and this is uh, this is pretty cool. You've definitely put your 3D printer to good use here. Yeah. Oh, this is actually a very simple construct. What we have is we have a base, and inside this base, there's all the support that you need to be able to put a bunch of WS2812 LEDs underneath, mm -hmm. which is what gives us this nice... In fact, Kara, if you could drop the lights again, we can show them exactly what there is here. So if I'm going to go ahead and turn off... By the way, this is all a wireless remote, so I can wirelessly turn off all of the standard illumination. There's a, a ring of WS2812 LEDs that just very gently illuminate the water. Uh, and the reason why I did that, rather than going full tilt, was because we didn't want to destroy the roots of the plants that we're gonna be growing. Right, roots don't like lights. They really don't. So this is all diffused light. But then we also have this, I can press a button and this turns on the grow light as well as the fan up top. Now this is, uh, this is actually the weaker version. I've created a much stronger version of an LED grow light that we're going to be using today. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, again, it's all on a key fob. It gives me the ability to do that. Also, I know some people don't like the false color that you get, like, because everything looks blue, right? Right. So, I added this mode. You can turn off the grow light and turn on a full spectrum light. And this full spectrum yeah. actually shows you what something really looks like. Right. So yeah. you can get a closer look at your plant without it looking strange. Precisely. And of course, the last button allows me to turn on and off the Arduino. So if I want to go to bed, I just click all these and everything shuts down. Ooh. And you've got it hooked up to a bubbler too? And there's a bubbler in here because remember, this is a hydroponic system. Mm -hmm. Now, people have asked, well, isn't this, aren't you going to drown the roots? The roots are eventually going to come down into this area. Mm -hmm. And no, because roots don't really drown, they suffocate. They need oxygen. So if it doesn't cycle the water around? Right. Is that how? What happens is the water gets stagnant, all the oxygen <laughs> is gone, and the roots die. Well, that's what the bubbler does. The bubbler oxygen oxygenates the water mm -hmm. so that even though I have a root system that will be growing down into this, mm -hmm. it, it should stay healthy. Now, caveat, caveat, yeah. <laughs> some plants like that, some plants don't. So you how do you know? You just look at, have you to research look it, it up. Yeah, okay. look it up. Which plants you can grow, grow hydroponically and which plants really don't like that. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Now, there's another feature, and Kara, if you could go to the overhead, I, I think this part will actually be in focus. Uh, so this is not a mistake. 
that's actually something that we created. This is the perfect size for what's called a net pot. It's a three inch net pot that allows us to put, remember those little uh, grow down cubes? Yeah. The rock wool? We could put them inside the net pot, put it in here, and the, it, the, it will uh, cradle it? It will cradle it yeah. down into the water. The, uh, the rock wool will actually wick the water up so the, root, the, uh, the, the cube stays nice and wet, even mm -hmm. though it's still giving oxygen to the roots. And then those roots will grow through the pot, because it is a net pot, down into the water. And eventually, we should see this beautiful little root system getting yeah. illuminated by the LEDs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And right now you have those, uh, those little hydro balls in there. Are yeah. you planning on keeping those in there um, with the plant? You actually could, because that's what they're designed for. They hold yeah. on to water really well. Yeah. Uh, I, in, ultimately, I'd like to put fish in there, which they, <laughs> those hydro balls wouldn't be good, very good for that. No, no, no. Yeah, but yeah. They look neat. And then the other thing is, uh, I'm using standard aluminum risers. These cost like 50 cents each. And you can pick what size you want, which will control how far your light is from the top of, of the container. So, sure. for example, I could have them all the way down here, mm -hmm. and when I turn this thing on, it's much more, Ooh. I mean, here, go to the, go to the, the side cool. view for this one, Kara. Oh, wait, we can have like a rave. It looks Ooh. like, you know, the chamber that they put Luke in in Empire Strikes Back. Oh, the Carbonite, <laughs> this is, oh. <laughs> Not the Carbonite, yeah. the one where he's like healing in the water. Oh, right, right. Yeah, he's, he's healing in the healing goop. That's awesome. What's wrong with that? I mean, yeah. that's, that's what we all do. <laughs> we heal in the goop, right? It's very pretty. Yeah. I, I was mesmerized by it earlier. And, and by the way, uh, you could also use this as a fish tank, just FYI. Yeah. Super simple. It's actually the exact same build. So what are you using to wirelessly switch? Like yes, uh, this is something that we're going to be talking about in the third episode. It's just okay. a 433 megahertz remote. It's, it's $8 off of Banggood. It, it does. It has four keys. Mm -hmm. you know, a, B, C, D, and it just controls these relays. And we're going to be talking about relays and how they work. Awesome. Super simple system to control basically anything. So in this particular case, I've got three of them controlling the lights. Uh, the, the various, the grow lights, and actually let me turn those off. The grow light, the full spectrum light. So if I push this, I get the full spectrum light. Mm -hmm. If I push this one, I get the grow light. Well, of course, I could activate both of them at the same time. And this, the last button controls the Arduino, so it actually shuts the Arduino off. Oh, okay. Uh, now, the first button controls <laughs> the pump, but it's an AC pump. I would much prefer a DC it's pump. I'm still kind of revisioning that. But everything okay. else stays the same. No, that's really neat. I like yeah. that. Uh, now, what we need to do over the next couple of weeks is we're going to be showing you how to build this piece by piece because it actually is a lot. I mean, it may be one object, but there's three discrete parts. Mm -hmm. There's the LED array, there's the base that includes the Arduino and the electronics that let, let us light up this thing. And then there's the vase, which includes what I call the top assembly, right. which is where I would mount my, uh, my, uh, my little net pot mm -hmm. and the, uh, the hydroponic system, um, it, which all also includes a little pump. So we're going to be doing each of those every week and showing you how to construct one of these out of parts that you probably already have. Yeah, because we, we've talked about the heat sink and the fan that we've gotten yep. from a PC, and then we also talked about soldering all the LEDs together. Precisely. If someone, if you take a look at this, Kara, go to the overhead, this should look very familiar because this was what actually what we did last week. This was from the junk build. Remember, we tore apart those PCs. Mm -hmm. Well, this was just the, the 2.5-inch adapter, so 2.5-inch to 3.5-inch. And this is the one we actually pulled out of that PC. Now, this is the bright one. These right? are the super bright ones. I didn't want to use these for this demo because they were actually too, overwhelming. Too, they were like blowing out <laughs> cameras. That's not good. These are so much brighter. Uh, it gives us a lot more light. Uh, it's actually a little bit more efficient. But the build is going to be the same. I designed the 3D part so that it could use this 2.5 inch piece, mm -hmm. although you could really use any piece of scrap metal. All we need is something that will take the heat from the LEDs and, and transfer it. spread them out. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. And cool. another piece that we're going to be using from, uh, from the junk build is the fan. If you remember, we salvaged the CPU fan off the junk build, which I, you see it over there? It seems, um, seems to have disappeared. CPU fan? Uh, we had a CPU fan. Um, I don't know. Where are you, CPU fan? Okay, well, we'll, we'll be looking for that okay. in, in just a bit. Uh, well, hmm. I'm, I'm sure I, I have it in the bag. There's a lot of gear. Uh, and then the 3D printed pieces uh, is, is basically all, the only other part you need. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. I'm, so this must have used up the whole width of your bed. Uh, that is exactly as big as I can get. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I probably would have rounded it out a little bit more because if you look at the base, uh, you know it, it's oblong on the edges. Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to make it a, a, like a total circle, but complete the, circle. My yeah. bed wasn't big enough. Wow. 
Yeah. It looks yeah. nice though. Yeah, it does. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this. We're gonna we're gonna take the um, the aquarium and we're actually gonna move it out of the way so that we can have some build space. Oh, okay. Because we are actually going to assemble the LED array. Uh, and show people how it works. Okay. All right, let me actually unplug the bubbler so we don't have that sound anymore. Bye-bye. I think it's this one? Yeah. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Looks like you lost Ooh. the TV, too. Oh, oh it's back. It's don't back. <laughs> okay, so it's going to start with this. This is going to be the, uh, the LED array. If I were to provide 12 volts power to this thing right now, it would be incredibly, ridiculously bright. Are these just... Uh, WS2812s? No, no, these are f just 50-50. So they, oh, 50 /50. they, uh, they're blue. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the, the right wavelength for growth in the plant. Ah. Um, they are not individually assignable. In fact, they cannot change color. These will only be blue. But that's fine, because we don't want any other color for our plant, right? Precisely, but I mean, they are ridiculously <laughs> bright. If I were to turn this on right now, it, it, actually the camera would just turn blue. It'd just blow it out. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, but before we go there, let me show you how we created this. We've kind of glossed over 3D printing in the last couple of projects that we've done because I do the design and then people just print what right, I create. Right, just copy what you made. Yeah, I thought maybe we should take a bit more thorough look of what goes into a 3D design because I want people to be able to take this project and modify it for their own use. Right, they might not have the, sa the same hard drive plate that we used. Precisely, there, because- They wanna make a bigger one. Exactly, because we did a junk build. I mean, the power supply and the fan and the adapter did come from the junk build. What they pull out of their junk build might be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I, I gave them the component 3D pieces so they can assemble them and modify them as necessary. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into that. Uh, Kara, if you could go over to uh, my computer. Again, we're using Tinkercad. And folks, I know, I know, I know that there are much more advanced suites that we could use. The reason why we're using Tinkercad is because it's free, because everybody has access to it, and because, well... It's good enough for our purposes. Yeah, exactly, especially if you design it the way that I've designed it. So if you look here, these... I mean, probably actually I could scroll through a couple of pages. These are all the different parts that I had to create in order to make the Aquavase work properly. Uh, and you'll notice that there's, there's little components like this. This is actually a part of another component. Mm. What, what I learned, because remember when we did the cyberpunk glasses? Right, where that you had model was ridiculous. Doing tapered edges and circumferences is, really right. dif is kind of difficult. So here, actually, let me, let me go to, this was one of the very first <laughs> 3D designs we ever did uh, on know-how. And uh, hold on, let me see, where's the, the big one? Because Tinkercad is loading ridiculously slowly. Uh, I actually forgot about this. Uh, coming over Tinkercad, it uh, tends to be crazy slow. slow. Oh, right, yeah. this was your, the yeah, lens Yeah, remember this? Or, yeah. So this, yeah, this was just a piece that went on to the lens. Now, the difficult part, part about this is because there were so many different objects, so many different objects and, and uh, empty spaces, it became almost impossible to modify something without moving everything out of the way. And then there was no easy way to move it back without messing up the design. So the easiest way is to get close to the shape that you want and then export that as export its own shape it and then and import it. So it helps to think of a, 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 a complicated project, not in terms of it being an entire project, but think of the individual components that go into that project. Right. And then you can assemble them piece by piece, giving you a lot of flexibility in the design without having to, uh, well, deal with this, this right. kind of a mess. Yeah, that's a little insane. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad mess. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new design uh, like this, and we're going to import. You can download this. This is already available. We're gonna download what I've called the helper files. The helper files will allow us to assemble this 3D object that we've created, but do it piece by piece. Mm. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna browse, and I've put the folder on my desktop under, uh, where is that, uh, Aquavase LED. And inside of that, you're gonna find a folder called LED helper files. Now, I've also included these. So all these files right here, that, those are actually the five component pieces completely designed. So you could oh, okay. just print that, but do a little bit of learning. Learning yeah. is a lot better. This is super, super simple. I'm gonna take you through step by step. We're gonna start with A1 and go right down. So I'm, I'm gonna import A1. 
uh, which, hold on, if, if I can get back to where my computer went. Uh, A1 is the uh, Aquavase LED fixture array. So this is the initial piece that we need to be able to install our little adapter. Uh, I can barely see that thing. Uh, so import right there? Here we go. Hey. So this is just the box, right? This is just the box that the, the, uh, the little adapter plate is going to go into. Mm -hmm. Now, there's already four holes there because those are the holes that you need for this adapter mount. I didn't want to make that part difficult for our audience. Right. Okay, so when I install the plate, though, those four holes are where the plate is going to get bolted. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, take the next piece. So we're going to do a browse, and we're going to take the second file in the helper folder. This is a little bit different. So I'm going to import this, and this is the plate mount. These are, uh, I don't just need those holes. I'm going to need holes in the side of the entire assembly in order to access the screws. Mm -hmm. Actually, care if you go to the overhead here, you know, you'll notice these are the screws right here. So one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is it's almost impossible to get a screwdriver oh, yeah. at that angle. So, okay. So what I did was I put holes in the skirt in order to make sure that I can take a long screwdriver and just put it inside and, and tighten those screws. Smart. Yeah. But the easiest way to do that was to make these holes. So if we go back to this design, this is not in the right place. What you need to do is you need to raise it by seven millimeters and you just grab this little, this black piece and it actually tells you some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's now at the right height, but notice how it doesn't line up with those holes. So you need to go off to the left there? Correct. So raise it by seven and then I need to uh, move it over by eight millimeters. Just grab it and pull it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and boop. Eight. Okay, so now it's in the right place. So as I build the object around this box, it will automatically put the holes, but I have to Gray it out. make it a hole. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's, it's actually an empty space. Anything I put here, any object I put that intersects with those will become empty. Yeah. All okay. right. So let's go ahead and put the next piece. The next piece is going to be the wings. So browse, and I'm inserting A3, which are the wings, and import it, and boom. Okay, so this is the side that uh, holds the entire assembly onto the aluminum risers. So when I, uh, when I have it above my aqua vase, mm -hmm. this is the piece that's going to take most of the weight. Right. Uh, now notice, see this? It <laughs> automatically makes those holes for me which is nice because it also means I can add, like if you wanted to change this, if you think it's not strong enough because you're putting a lot of weight, mm -hmm. you could actually add support here and it would automatically make sure that that, that avenue remains clear for you to install the, uh, the screws. Right. All right. Cool. So that's uh, my fixtures. The next part are the wing voids. Just like we did for the mount, we need to make sure that we have a place to put the aluminum tubes. Right now, this is solid. Uh, which so yeah, you need to make another rectangle. Correct. That's the size of the the holes that you have here. Uh huh. So here we go. Uh, I believe it's a. Is it a four? Yeah, a four is the wing voids. So we can import. And ah. there we go. But the problem is when I import, it automatically lands all the objects on the bed. Right. I don't want to land this on the bed because when I turn these into holes, <laughs> I need a little bit of uh, filament up top to keep the pulse from just sliding through All it, the way right? through, right. All yeah. the way through. So what I need to do is I need to raise it by, uh, by two millimeters. So again, I just grab this little black part and raise it up. One, two. Oh, that's three. Wait, two. There we go. Oh, and that's one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard because I can't actually see it. Easy now. Oh, there we go. Easy. Okay. And then turn it into a void and, and a hole. <clears throat> what you should remind people too is that we're actually printing this. This will. This is upside down. This is upside. Uh, yeah. Uh, remember, <laughs> you have to think about gravity. Exactly. And in, in gravity, if I were to try to pin, print this right side up, uh, I would need so much support material. It it's wouldn't be make ridiculous. Sense, yeah. But see, if you look underneath we don't have any, uh, there's no cutout here. And that's yeah. because we raise those holes by two millimeters, which means when I insert my aluminum risers, mm -hmm. they will go within two millimeters of the, of the end here and then it will be held up yeah. rather than just sliding through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives me my, uh, hold on, my, my risers. I do wanna do something else here. Uh, hold on, let me forward to my notes because uh, I, I wanna make sure I give you the right information. I'm gonna install the riser lock. 
This is something that I haven't used yet, but I, I think I'm going to want to. Uh, I want a way to put bolts through the risers in order to hold everything in place. Oops, I, I just, no, go away, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, that was... Uh, Control Z? There we go. Okay, stop. Oh, Tinkercad. Tinkercad, stop it. It's going, there we go, okay. So let's import. Uh, again, I, I'm having to stare at the same screen that everyone is staring at. It's a little difficult. What are you is looking for, the riser lock? Yeah, riser yeah, lock. Yeah, that's riser lock. All right, so import that. <coughs> and what this is, is this is going to become another void that I, will allow me to put a screw straight through this assembly, straight through the aluminum rod, and it will lock me into place. Uh, now, the way I have it designed is you need to raise this by 30 millimeters. So you grab this, go up 30. Like soup, and then boom down. There we go. And then I'm going to turn it into a hole. Nice. And this gives me a way, a straight shot through the middle. I could take a Dremel tool, drill through the aluminum square, and, uh, and then there's also one on the bottom, on the base, mm -hmm. which will completely lock it in. So you could actually carry it by the top. Yeah, that's going to be solid. Yeah, no, it's solid. I, I designed this piece so that there's extra strength. Right. Uh, so you should be able to hold this thing by the risers if you lock it in, even when the thing is completely full of water. Cool. Um, which used up a lot of filament, by the way. <laughs> just just yeah. FYI. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, so the next part that we want to do is we need to get the uh, LED fixture holes, which is A6. So we're going to browse to A6 which is right here, there we go. And we're gonna import that. And uh, you can't see them, but what they are is they're a design element that allows me not to use up as much filament and also gives me the ability to lock something on the top. See these? Mm -hmm. So this is actually those riser holes that we just added. Right. You just can't see them because they're inside. Oh, but they, okay. they won't be for long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our, uh, our, our 3D print and we're gonna turn them into holes. You can't see them because again, they're inside, <laughs> but you will see them in just a bit because the last piece that we're gonna add, the, the A7, this is the entire uh, fixture. So this mm. is the main void, which looks like this. There we go. Ah. What we need to do is we need to raise that by 13 millimeters. Right. One, two, three, almost, 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 that, that, that. Oh. Oh. There we go. Wait. There we go. And then we're going to turn it into a hole. And this eliminates all that excess. All that excess. Uh, and here we have, this is the finished fixture. So this is what it's going to look like. Notice how we've got those holes at the there bottom. They are. And they've actually cut through the top once we added this main void. Cool. Uh, so, you know, the reason why we did it this way is this is a much easier way to change the design later on. Mm -hmm. If I had given people just one big STL file, yeah, there wouldn't be a real good way to modify yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You could print it the way that I printed it, but that's about it. This way, if someone wants to, say, change the size of the risers because they want more support, right. they can do that without affecting the rest of the design. Right, or they could even shrink the size of the project, use like a mason jar or something like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's the other thing, because this is a 5-inch, it's a standard 5-inch width. Mm -hmm. It will hold anything that's 5-inch. There's a lot of different vases of this size, yeah. Um, and yeah, there's mason jars that will fit right down in there. That's cool. So just you know, pick what you want to do. Huh. Uh, we're going to be doing this for every component. So for the base and for the top assembly, mm -hmm. I've got helper files for all of them. So people hopefully will be giving us uh, more interesting versions of this. Cool. In fact, here, let me, let me show you a little something something. I'm going to go ahead and export this. Uh, download for 3D printing as Save an STL. STL. There we go. And we're going to. Oh, I can you zoom in on that? I can't see. You want to yeah. save file? Save file. Okay. There we yeah. go. And I think it saved it to the downloads. Uh, and then I'm going to go back into Tinkercad. Oh gosh, I really. This is really not a good way to work. And when you reopen it up, it's going to be its own. It's going to be its own model. thing, right? right. So what we're going to do <clears> is we're going to do this. We're going to create a new design, and we're going to open up that file that we just exported. So we're going to re-import. Uh, oh no! Can you? I can't. Can you, I can't see it. So you have, you're going to have to zoom in. There we go. Uh, we put it on. I think we put it on the desktop. Is it on the desktop? Uh, <laughs> oh no! It's on. Okay, wait. Hold on. Download? I know where it is. It's in downloads. Um, so uh, top on the right below quick access there. 
Uh, up one, up. There you go. There, there it is. we go. Funky dupe bloat. Funky dupe bloat. <laughs> yeah, it it <laughs> auto names files. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hold on. Give it time. Give it time. And blop bam. So this is the finished file. This is what would print, which is exactly what we had printed. Yeah. But it's all one complete piece. Exactly. So if if they if they download the zip file and they just use the pre-made ones, mm -hmm. this is what they would get. Right. But because I gave them the helper files, they can, can assemble it themselves it. and modify. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So next up, folks, we're gonna go past the 3D printing because we have to actually show you how this thing is going to come together. It's gonna do a little bit of soldering. We're gonna show you some of the basic steps. We're not gonna create this because <laughs> that would be a little silly since right. you can already see it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take the sponsor of this episode of Know How. Hey, Brian. Yeah? You know, when I was doing all this, uh, I needed a lot of tools. Right. Did you break anything along the way? Uh, maybe like three of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. You probably need like a kit to help you put it back together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? When I, when I deal with kits and when I deal with pieces, and when I deal with my Maker Workshop, there really is only one brand that I trust. And it's the same one I trust. It's the iFixit kit. Exactly. Now, iFixit isn't just a collection of tools and parts. You see, it's a community. And specifically, it's a community of geeks who understand that you need instructions. You need step-by-step -step guides. You need the information to be able to take apart upgrade and put everything back together in your digital life. Now, not only do they understand that, but they've given you basically everything you need. Yes, all those tools. Yes, all those parts. Yes, all those instructions to make sure that there is no project that is beyond your skill set. And today we're talking about this. It's their all new latest and greatest all new ProTech toolkit. This thing is gorgeous. It's completely reimagined, just as rugged and portable as before, but this time far more flexible and far more durable. You see, they listened to their customers and they asked them, what don't you like about the ProTech Toolkit? What would you like to see improved? And they built it into this version. It's got a more durable case engineered without hinges or latches, which as we know, will break. Instead, it has magnets, magnets to hold on the lid, to hold in all the bits, which by the way, are angled. So it's now easier to get them in and out of their case, which means you are much less likely to lose them. Now the 64-bit kit, which is bigger than the old 54-bit driver kit, is held to a roll by that same magnet system and it uses a shell cover to make sure it stays protected. Uh, more bits means fewer repair roadblocks, which means you get your projects completed more quickly. They also have a completely redesigned swivel top precision driver and a flex extension for hard to reach screws. They give you precision ESD safe tweezers, a pair of reverse tweezers, a wide variety of plastic opening tools and picks, uh, suction cups for disassembly work, metal spudgers, plastic spudgers, and iFixit's own rubber handed Jimmy Pry tool, which means that you can open things like laptop cases and tablets without marring that surface, without using a, a straight edge or a, or a flat screwdriver just to sort of crack that thing open. You can do it right with iFixit. They even give you that ESD safety strap to make sure that you don't destroy your job with static shock. Uh, folks, it's not just the tools, although I love the tools. Again, it's that 21,000 strong library of free step-by-step -step repair guides and more than 80,000 solutions. If it's broken, if you want to upgrade it, or if you just want to see how it works, iFixit is your best friend. And the best part, best part is that this is all backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Buy it because it's awesome or don't. Buy it because Brian and I use it or don't. And you still get free access to all of the free repair resources on iFixit.com. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to grab yourself an all new ProTech toolkit and get going on your next fix, hack, or build. Just head over to iFixit.com slash twit and use the code KNOWHOW at checkout to save $5 on your purchase of $10 or more. We thank iFixit for their support know-how. All right, Brian, let's get dirty. A few things we're going to need. Wait, we're doing more soil work or no? No, no. This oh, okay. is a different kind of dirty. This oh, is solder okay. dirty. Oh, okay. Yeah. The so kind where if you smell chicken, it's time to stop. Precisely. Okay. Now, this is, the, this is actually a template of the 3D frame, but I cut it early because I didn't want any of the, uh, the columns to get in the way of, of the camera. So oh. it's, the same, it's the same thing. It allows us to work on it just as we would with here, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be nearly as cumbersome. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So let's get that out of the way. The first thing we want to do is we want to mount this. Now, this was from the junk build. Watch last week's episode if you want to know how we made this. Essentially, this is a, a 10 strips of 5050 blue SM uh, surface mount display mm -hmm. uh, uh, technology devices, which are <coughs> on top of 
this. This was just the mounting bracket for an SSD. Mm -hmm. So we pulled this out of our junk box because we don't need a mounting bracket. Nope. And this becomes our heat spreader. And the reason why a heat spreader is important is because we want the heat from the LEDs to be pulled away from the LEDs. Right, they'll go through the metal here and then this is where we'll put like a heat sink with a fan on it. Right, so uh, what we've got is this. This is thermal adhesive which uh, we, it's like an epoxy. So we mix these two parts together. Hmm. We're gonna put some right here and then we put the heat sink fan that we pulled out from the junk build on top of this. And what that will allow us to do is to really to, to keep this cool, which means the LEDs stay cool. And it'll hold it together, because this is different oh, yeah. than what you would use on like a CPU and a oh, computer. Oh no, no, no this, this is epoxy. Okay. So this, I mean, you can lift that entire assembly with, via Just the fan. Just that, okay. Yeah, it's, it's really, really strong, which also means Get it right, because <laughs> you ain't taking that thing off. Right. Don't yeah. get it stuck to your hands. Keep it right. Keep it tight. Keep it, keep it tight. Yeah. All right. Uh, you'll notice the way that we designed this, you can't put this in the wrong way, because the screws only line up a certain this way. way. So yeah. the screw holes are there and there. If I try to put this backwards, <laughs> uh, that, that's just it's not going to work. Gonna work yeah. That's just not going to work. So it goes in like this. Uh, I have soldered right down the middle. But you can feel free to solder on the side. I, I just kind of like doing it this way because I, <laughs> I feel like it, it looks, looks clean. It looks clean. It looks a yeah. bit more badass, right? Well, it always reminds me of like a hot dog. It looks like uh, the ketchup down the middle of a hot dog. Uh, um, okay. I don't know why. Sure, sure. That's cool, man. No, I like it. Uh, uh, now, <laughs> you do hungry. need a couple of screws. Mm -hmm. uh, these are 632. This, these are uh, uh, three quarter inch screws. Uh, because what's going to happen is, uh, again, it's, it's not going to work on this because this is slightly of a different diameter. But here, we have this build-out. Mm -hmm. And this build-out is what uh, allows this LED strip to stay on the top. Right. Uh, so if you compare it to this, this goes out about 10 millimeters. Well, you need a screw that's this big in order to hold that into place. Right. Uh, so for example, oh, actually I can't take those off because mm -hmm. I don't have the long one. But this just goes on the side and we just... Do it like that, and uh, there. Th if you if you've done it right, you kept it tight, and you've kept it tight. This will just hold on. Wait, it, actually, it's probably easier for me just to do this outside of the case, like that. And you you do that for all four of them. This would lock it into place. Right. Now, you do really need to make sure that you screw in all four because this is the heaviest part of the <laughs> LED assembly. And you don't want it falling down onto your plant. Well, you especially don't or want it falling water. down into the water since that's where most of the voltage is going. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah that would so, be bad. So don't do that. Okay. Bad. But you'll, you'll, uh, you'll notice that in this one, we actually have two different types of lights. Uh, let me get my, where, where the key fob go? I am losing everything. <laughs> There's so, a lot of stuff on this set. There is. So here, I've got this one that gives me my grow light and I have this one which, uh, oh, no, that's the uh, Arduino. I have this one, there which gives go. me my full spectrum light. Right. Um, and so I put those on two separate circuits, but you will notice right here, there's only three wires coming out of here. That's because I've got two hot lines, so this is carrying my voltage, mm -hmm. and a single ground. So they are sharing ground. That makes sense. Uh, and uh, you'll notice it right here. I care if you could ME into this. So what I've got is, this is the ground line for all of those uh, LEDs in the array, right? Right. And right here, these little black ones, those are the ground lines for these. For the outside lights. Yeah. Right, so they are sharing that ground line. They're all going into the same the But same they're not sharing path. the power. They're not sharing power, otherwise they would turn on at the same time. That and I want to be able to turn them on independently. Mm -hmm. uh, so just remember, you don't need to run four wires down, you can run three. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I've done is, the power line for the fan is actually tied in to the power for the strip. So when I turn on the strip, it mm -hmm. automatically turns on the fan for that uh, removes the heat from the spreader. Right, and since you're only using two little strips for the other lights, you don't need the heat sink to... Yeah, the they're, they're, they're really on. not, and those are really, they're not designed to be on all the time. Mm -hmm. These are designed to be on only when I want to actually see what the plants look like. Right. That gives me my full spectrum. Uh, and, you know, honestly, when you're talking about eight lights versus 80 lights, mm -hmm. they don't give you a lot of extra light. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's take a look at this because we need to add the full spectrum lights to this because right now all we've got is blue. Well, I'm using these. This is a strip of 50-50s, mm -hmm. which is about as bright as you could get. They run at 12 volts, but you'll notice they're waterproof. They're in the waterproof, the Ooh. little epoxy. Actually, here, I don't let's know if you see. can get in on this, Kara. Um, 
And it's shiny. It's really shiny. See that shininess? So it's below a layer of plastic, of polymer, that waterproofs it. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is, well, twofold. First, we need to get to those contacts, which yeah. are currently underneath. So you're going to have to, like, scrape that away? I'm going to have to scrape that. And the second thing is, if I, uh, if I enclose it like this, it actually allows the heat to build up, which I really, really don't want to happen. Oh, okay. That would be bad, uh, especially since the, these can actually get hot enough to melt this. Oof. I would oof. really not want my LEDs to melt through the LED fixture. That would be bad. So if you didn't have these connected to a heat sink, I uh, just don't have them on all the time? Or? Yeah, well, again, I, I did not design the full spectrum LEDs to be on all the time. They're, right. they're designed so like you can come in and show, oh, look, this is what it looks like, right. and then switch back to the grow lights. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. But, so, but check this out. This is actually a lot easier than a lot of people think. All you need to do is cut. So I'm going to cut two. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, when you're dealing with these kinds of LEDs, these LEDs are actually in a set of three. Mm -hmm. Every copper contact, that's where you can cut. Right. If you cut in between them... <laughs> you're cutting the logic. Oh, well, there, there's no logic here, but what's oh. happening is you're actually providing more voltage than those three lights are going to... Oh, I see. That's okay. not, it's, it's no good. So always cut at the copper. So I'm going to cut at the copper. So you've got a row of six then. Yeah, and these are just... These are actually uh, clothing scissors. Mm. Scissors go. work. Scissors are scissors. Now, here, it's, ac it's still inside this polymer, so that doesn't give me much help. Right. I, uh, originally, I was using an exacto to scrape it away, and then I yeah. just got frustrated, and I started using my fingernails. It works a whole lot better. Really? Yeah, so all I have to do up. is just do this. So just like I, I would be removing the, uh, the backing, yeah. instead, I am going to peel away. Oh, yeah. See, it just comes right off. So once Perfect. you get it started, there we go. So now, I guess... Once you do that, though, do you have to worry about if water contacted that? that yeah, but part? I mean, this is so far off o over the bubbler; it's, yeah. it shouldn't it shouldn't hurt. Uh, if I if I was paranoid, though, what I could do is right now I could just snip that one piece I've peeled, put it back down, and, and then like tape it around or something. Well, it'll popular. stay. It'll yeah. stay, oh. and, and then the rest of the strip will be waterproof. But I, I'm not really worried about that. So yeah. what I'm doing, I'm just going to keep pulling. Oh, you just have to do You're this. You're a madman. You have to do it slowly because if you do it quickly, it will <laughs> actually it will snap, and then you have to find another edge. Oh, okay. uh, it really helps to have sharp fingernails, so I actually grew <laughs> this one out. <laughs> See what I do for you, Grow How? Wow. I mean, know how? I mean, you could just buy a not waterproof strip then. Right? You could, but um, the difference in price is negligible. Oh, okay. So and I, as well. the waterproofing actually does come in handy, so okay. I, I like okay. to have it. And, and this is, you know, this takes all of a couple of minutes for for every one that you do. Um, hmm. Here, you wanna you wanna give this a try? Whoa! Oh, there we go. Got so it. now I've got a nice clean strip that I can solder next to my array. Hmm. Uh, now, one thing, depending on how well your, uh, your strip was packaged, it may or may not stick to the, uh, to the plastic, to the filament. This one stuck no problem. In fact, that's, it's still pretty tight. Mm -hmm. This one kept falling off, so I just put a little bead of hot glue. <laughs> to uh, hold hot, it glue in. hot glue is your friend. Nice. Absolutely is your friend. Uh, okay, and what we, again, we're going to put this like this. I came up with another design that actually used 16 of these, so it was, it was double stuck like that. Oh, uh, okay. But then I actually did start running into some heating problems. Okay. Uh, a, f a future design of this, I may actually put another piece of metal here. Just, yeah, or, yeah, extended from here, maybe? Or? Right, right. Okay. But I, I didn't want to do that for this build. Yeah. Because yeah. I was I mean, tired. It's a little overkill. Th these are really just so you can see the plant, right? Precisely, so. precisely. All right, let's talk a little bit about the wiring. So we already explained how we are going to share a common off of this array, because we don't want to have to run four lines. Uh, we only want to run three. We want to run ground, and we want to run the hot line for each one of these. And that's enough. Oh, let's get that out of there. That's enough for a, let, to let us individually control um, the grow lights hmm. and the full spectrum lights. Actually, I kind of like this. Whoa. It's like a disco. <laughs> what? <laughs> boots and cats and boots and cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, oh, I'm not sorry. I digress. <laughs> that was, we get distracted by blinky get, things. I get, I'm very easily distracted. <laughs> you may have noticed that. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's talk about uh, the heat sink because this is actually a big component and uh, any heat sink will do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely any heat sink. The one that we pulled off was this. It's a cooler master. This thing is pretty massive. Yeah, it's solid. Um, and in here, feel that. <sighs> yeah, that's hefty. That's, that's a nice hefty chunk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Beefy. Beefy. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix together 
some epoxy. Uh, now, ideally, what I would do is I would clean this surface. I'm not going to do that because we're on the stream and I don't want to waste your time. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, make sure when you fit this, notice how there don't are little Don't put it bumps. on the risers. Yeah, yeah if, if it's not making contact, it's not transferring heat. So right. Well, it'll be transferring heat, but on a very small amount of surface Super area. small area. <laughs> if you notice, these heat sinks fit exactly between those, those bumps on either side. But if I turn it this way, not so much. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to mix together equal parts of this. Oh. <laughs> That's not how it sounds. Wait, wait. Uh, this happens when you get older. <laughs> and now the illusion is ruined. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> There's We're something so, wrong with the so two of mature. you. So mature. Seriously. <laughs> there's something very, very wrong with the two of you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so. All right. That's equal parts. There we go. <laughs> it smells lovely, by the way. And then we got to mix it. So this is just an epoxy. But this is an epoxy that's been specifically designed to allow us to transfer heat. It's, gonna, it's just a 50-50 mixture? It's a 50-50 uh, mixture. Epoxy. And... Uh, the the mixture it will become more like yeah you can smell it right yeah it becomes like ceramic which is really really good at transferring heat mm -hmm. so what we're gonna do you is wouldn't want to use this on your computer CPU though no, no. you'll never remove that ever heat from your CPU ever <laughs> ever no this was this is designed uh, for people who are like designing heat sinks heat sink uh, projects mm -hmm. where they need something to stay right like Steve Gibson attaching one to his hard drive. Right, because, you know, that's what you do. Yeah. And actually, this is, I made a much bigger mess of this than it had to be. Mm, Hold on, look at all that. Let's see if I can clean it a little bit. Mm, Here, like mayonnaise. Here, you want to hold that? Okay. Downtown. <laughs> Cruising through the alley. Oh, wait, Helen. Oh, you need that again? Yeah, so I'm going to do a little slight spread on the heat sink to make nice sure we're covering up. Oh, look at that, Brian. <laughs> Would it have been easier to do it on the heat sink than on the plate? I like to do it a little bit on either because uh, you may not, it may look smooth, but there are always microscopic imperfections in the mm -hmm. surfaces. And if you do it this way, it kind of makes sure that that gets filled in. I see. You, you used to do this when you were doing a, uh, your own modding, right? Yeah. You, you would always put thermal compound a little bit on the CPU and a little bit on the heat sink. Yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, there's also like, I remember there was a... Um, over time, like it would heat cycle, and it yeah. would actually at, over time it would become uh, better at transferring mm -hmm. heat. Much better. Uh, oh. Do you want me to throw that away? Yeah, if you could, because that, that will get I'll on find everything. A place. Here, here, catch no. <laughs> on everything. Now, typically, what I would do is I would let this harden overnight. Um, it will harden in like ten minutes, but mm -hmm. uh, why? You know, why risk it? Just let yeah. it sit. Uh, I actually also have a clamp just to make sure that it maintains contact because you really don't want that uh, any sort of air bubbles to be forming. Right. And uh, what I typically do is I like, just give it a little. It, it, again, you've got experience like with this with uh, building computers. Mm -hmm. Give it like a little bit of wiggle. You're, you're trying to squeeze out any excess because you don't right. want that that paste to to uh, mess up. The, the contact. Mm -hmm. When this dries, that thing is going to be strong, <laughs> crazy, crazy strong. <laughs> how long strong. did you say? 10 minutes? Oh, 10 awesome. minutes, yeah. Uh, we're going to be working on it because, of course, we're not going to make the stream wait 10 minutes. But I just want to show you this, this real quick connection uh, because this is, this is pretty self-explanatory. Th this is not a complicated circuit. Mm -mm. But I do want to show you how I'm going to connect the fan to, uh, to this. Okay. Okay, so what we got is, where's my snips? Snips. Uh, you got scissors? Oh, no, I got no, citizen snips right here. Snips. So I'm just going to cut this off. Shit. Now, uh, the, the, we, uh, the wiring set is different, so I can't tell you exactly what yours is going to look like. But in this case, it's pretty obvious. I have black, mm -hmm. which is going to be ground. I have red, which mm -hmm. is going to be my positive. That's my voltage. And, and I have blue, which is the sensor dad. wire. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to be using that. So, yeah, I only want the black and the red. And what the black and the red will allow me to do, once I strip them, is I can solder this to the LED array. And uh, that means that whenever the LED array powers up, my, uh, my fan will power up as well. Now, if you really wanted to, if you were one of these people who was just absolutely paranoid about the sound that stuff makes, you could wire the fan to the fourth uh, contact mm -hmm. on, the, on the relay. 
and it would allow you to turn the fan on and off to get rid of that noise. But I, I don't suggest that just because you really don't want to kill the LEDs. Right. That's a, that's a bad thing. Bad, bad. Yeah. Um, where did I put... Ah, solder. Ha-ha. And helping hands. Ooh. Whoa, this is like... I actually have the things I'm supposed to have, right? You're getting ready. I know. Go figure. All right, here we go. Okay. Look at this. Is that a new soldering kit? I don't recognize that. Oh, this is a great soldering kit. Yeah, it looks nice. So uh, this is something I've had in my lab for a while, and I, I just thought we should bring it in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, we'll, we'll show that off in a bit, but uh, it's got a, I can digitally set the, the temperature. Ooh. So right now it's 290, it's, it's rising quickly. This also has the ability to check voltages, so I can put like little banana clips into it, and it can supply power. So if I wanted a power supply, this can actually do it. Nifty, I like yeah. it. It's got a heat gun too here? Uh, that's a, no, it's a uh, reflow. Reflow, that's it. Yeah. yeah so reflow. if I wanted to do surface mount, what I can do is I can put a little dab of solder and I put the uh, components down and then just melt the solder with the heat gun. That's cool. It's actually that would be good for uh, Smitty's board. Yeah, that's actually how I did it. Ah. See, the thing is about that is mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. you need to make pretend like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it makes it more sure. entertaining. It's more entertaining. Well, see, uh, I'm genuine. I never know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, you're genuine. Ah, yes. Here we go. Hold on. Don't breathe in that smoke. I, dude, that's the only pleasure I have in life. Don't it's take gross. away my solder smoke. <laughs> that does explain a lot, though. I know. There's a lot of lead in my body. <laughs> <laughs> Way you, more than there's supposed to be. Did you paint, lead paint when you were a kid? Yeah. Did you grow up under power lines? I just, all I know is the Chinese toys tasted the best. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, that's going to be supplying power on that side, so I'm going to draw power from this side, side, which mm -hmm. is nice and simple. I can actually use the solder that's already there and just do this. Oh, actually, oh. let's clip. Uh, you know, we need like a proper mm -hmm. setup here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we need like a little uh, know-how toolkit that we can just slide out from underneath. Hmm, maybe we can build that. Hmm. If only we had a DIY show that could do things like that. Ah, uh, if only. Um, one, we can dream. We, we can, can dream. dream. But do not dare to chance. Easy now. Easy to do it. You sure that's not touching the other pad? Yeah, actually, there's not enough solder here. Oh. I, I did too good of a job. Needs more solder. Normally there's a crazy abundant excess of solder because I've done such a lousy job, but this time I actually did a good one. Uh, do me a favor. If you could hold, oh, if you could take this and hold down that red wire, I don't want it to jump off from the pad when I reheat. Oh, so you've got real helping hands now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look at that, Brian. Teamwork, Padre. G.I. Joe. Team know-how. Solder. I just wanted to do that to Brian. Thanks. Hey, man. You know what? It's because we're bros, bro. All right. And then... Ground. Don't tell Smitty I did this because it looks ugly. <laughs> Smitty would be angry. Smitty. Oh, dang it. I think you're going to need more solder. Yeah, I'm actually... I need, to, I need to clip it a little bit. This is long enough to cause a short, which is bad. Short or bad. Again, see, I, I did a too inefficient job the first time. Curse you, past Padre. Curse you, Snips! Did <laughs> a snip. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Woohoo! Okay, so now uh, when I supply power to this, it should light up the LEDs and the fan. And if you see smoke, you then did it wrong. I did it wrong. <laughs> let's go ahead and do that with our wonderful little device here that I've brought in. If, you oh, space? can you unbind that? Oh, yeah, you're taped in here. <laughs> hey, why did I do that? Okay, we didn't need that. There you go. That's okay. What was that? Can you clear your space? That's, we have so much stuff on this desk. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> okay, that's hot, so stay away from that. All right, I'm going to tie the lines in to my... Actually, I'm going to turn on the power supply first and go to 12 volts. Hmm. Yeah, look at that, Brian. I got my own little power supply. What you got? <laughs> Nothing. Exactly. Uh, 
beep. It's beeping at me, Padre. Oh, hey, 8.5 volts. No, Whoa. 12 volts. No, thank you. There we go. And now we're going downtown. We're cruising through the alley. I'm tiptoeing to Tip the streets like Delhi. Must to keep the handle on the hole. Okay, so it might it might turn on the machine. It, it might be a device that was made somewhere in Asia. Yeah, where, is it like straight translation? Right I, there? I don't think that's even a straight translation. I think that's literally someone who's like, <laughs> how can we make this really confusing? <laughs> I mean, I get the gist. I Wait, guess. I, why am I having so much trouble? This is just a screw in terminal, Brian. I shouldn't be having this problem. Oh, I know why. Focus. Hold on. Kara's confusing me. Oh, yeah. Blame the TD. Well, I mean, what else am I going to do? I'm not going to blame true. you. You're my bro. You're right. You're right. It's totally Kara's fault then. There <gasps> we go. What? So this automatically spins up the fan, and look how much brighter that is. Ah! Folks, this is why we did the demo with the other one. Here. It, it's what? actually levitating <laughs> off the table because it's so Let's bright. Let's turn this on. This, this is what those lights look straight up, like aimed into the camera. They look Ooh, like that. Yeah, bright. This is brighter ah! going down. Oh man, that's intense. Wait, wait. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Okay, wait. If someone has uh, epilepsy, we just give them a seizure. So let's stop. <laughs> if Greg was watching, and that's the hardest part. So that, as soon as I, I print out the full version of this, mm -hmm. this just screws in, and I'm ready to go. Very cool. Yeah. Now, in future episodes, what we're going to be doing is we're going to show you next the base. That's the next complicated piece because it's got the Arduino in there right. and the WS2812 lights. But this part is super simple. This is essentially just three pieces that are, are clamped together mm -hmm. with a little bit of silicone sealant in order to make sure that it gives us a watertight seal. Very cool. Yeah. I like it. And when we're done with this, here's the cool thing. We're going to be using it as an aqua vase but you already have an idea of turning this into an actual fishbowl. Yeah, yeah. I want an LED aquarium with the bubbles and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and by the way, people were asking about the, the working temp. I had it at 430 degrees. That's one of the nice things about this. I, actually, Kara, do you have the side view? Is this in the side view? Yeah, so the nice thing about this is this allows me to digitally set the temperature. Whoa. So whatever temperature I want for my, uh, my soldering iron, mm -hmm. that will let me do it. Actually, what did I have it set for? Did I have it for... Oh, it was a 48. I had it at top. Uh, and this is the power supply, which allows me to do the unsing. <laughs> and then this one is the, uh, the reflow gun. This is actually cool. And the nice thing about this, you know how much this thing cost? No. $75. I say that again? $75. $75? And it even includes interchangeable tips. Whoa. Uh, so I, yeah. What is this called? Right, you have yeah. This was actually a suggestion from you someone. One of, our, one of our chat rumors suggested this, and it, it's been a fantastic buy. Awesome. I, uh, I have a, a Hako at home, mm -hmm. uh, which is great, but I mean, this is pretty good too. Yeah, just remember to must to keep the handle on the holder before turn on the machine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Woohoo! Well, folks, we know that this was a lot of information, and guess what? We gave you step by step instructions. I, I literally, oh, I, I, uh, I created the project and then I followed my own instructions to make sure that it was all going to work properly. <laughs> it's almost foolproof. It's almost foolproof unless uh, you have to make to keep my instructions handle on holder. <laughs> you speak good. Yeah, yeah. You can find all of those instructions where, Brian? Well, they can find, <coughs> sorry, I choked up on those words. Well, you, you can know, find it at twitch.tv slash kh. And not only will you find your, all the links to the things that we used for today, but you'll find uh, a way to subscribe or download, which you'll definitely want to do with these projects that are going over multiple episodes. Absolutely. And also don't forget that one of the best places to experience know-how is in our Google Plus group. Just go to Google Plus and look for know-how. Join up. There is an approval process, but I approve everybody. We're just trying to get rid of the cam girls and all the, the spam accounts. You gotta moderate. It's over 10,000 members. It's, a, it's actually really fun. It's the most active group that we have here at Twit TV. There's makers of all experience levels, from ultra beginners to those who've been doing it for the last 50 years. If you've got question about electrical, if you've got question about quadcopters, if you've got questions about wood lathing, you're gonna find experts. That's the wonderful thing about the combined knowledge that is know-how. So again, go to Google Plus and look for know-how. That's right. But if you want to find out what we're doing when we're not here on the set or uh, what projects might be coming up, like we're actually going to Berlin tomorrow. 
Ich bin ein Berliner. Yes, you are a donut. You're I right. am a donut. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to figure out what we're doing at IFA or any, anything else that's behind the scenes stuff at Twit, uh, you're going to want to follow us on Twitter. I'm at cranky underscore hippo. And I am at Padre SJ. And uh, by the way, it's weird because today I felt as if the person at the con <laughs> There's a different actually presence. knew what they were doing. Right? It couldn't uh, have been Hal then. It couldn't have been Hal either. <gasps> Oh, it's oh, it's K it's dog. It's Kara. Can you tell? Let me Kara see. There's cool. my hair. Uh, That's how you can tell if Alex tries to beat me. Well, Alex has really <laughs> luxurious hair too. He so does. He does. No, well, not nearly. Yeah. Uh -huh. It, it feels different when he's sleeping. Though. What's your Twitter handle? Oh, you know, at Kara zero eight zero. Kara with a K. Uh huh. Don't mm -hmm. spell it any other way. How about that? <laughs> oh, you like that? You know how you spell karaoke too, right? Yeah, with Kara alcohol. Kara, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Folks, thank you Keep so very much for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. We're going to be doing more projects like this over the years. Uh, until next time, I'm Father Robert Balliser. I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, good deeds. <laughs>